and our I don't edit anything from the video. Okay. So just be prepared <laughs> to be on YouTube. Okay, I am going to click record. I pray to God that um, everything records well <laughs> and it goes through. All right, my phone is on do not disturb. Oh, let me fix that because I could tell people I'm doing something and they'll still. still what, what are you doing? I, I, I told you. <laughs> All right. I'm super excited. And I have to say thank you in person for everything. Like, you're yeah, welcome. And we'll talk about it on the pod. You're going to be like, oh my God, I didn't know. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to save some, some tea for the pod. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you and we're going to get into it. I'm so nervous just to let you know. So Me don't. Because um, uh, I cry. I've been in a, I'm not a usually a crier, but uh, when I wrote that book, I've been crying the whole damn time. And it's, <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to cry on there. I'm like, oh my God. No, it's, and if you say. So it might happen. So I can I, pause I recording wondering. if you need me to. You don't just have to let me know. I'm just like whatever is gonna happen is supposed to happen, so I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> and if I get the Zoom time thing, I'll just pay for it. Okay. So, you, all right, all right. Let's get into it. And I'm gonna do the intro like I would normally do. Video and record. What up, crew? What's good? This is a special episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. It's special all around, not because it's a bonus episode, but because we have a special guest here with us today. It's our first author. And I just have to say a little bit about this author. She, I don't really think she know how she, how she touched me in such a way, but she's a broadcaster, media manager, a producer, virtual assistant, and a podcast host of Regina Kids Podcast, and the author of two books called one, the first one is All My Broken Crayons Still Color, so daily affirmations for healing the soul, and her second book is Love You More, Grieving Isn't Easy, and Healing Hurts. And she sent me both of these books. So I am glad to announce she is also part of the crew. Our first author, our first guest, Maxie E. Norman. Welcome to the show. Hey, Shade. Hey. hey. <laughs> I am so excited. How are you feeling? Um, <laughs> I'm excited. I don't know. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. No, you do know. Day, you are right? excited. <laughs> it is a good day. And yeah. I think I said it. What up, crew? Was good. We know how Maxie is feeling. It's a good day for her. Yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day for me as well. <laughs> and I am super excited to get into this. Now, before we even get started, I told them a little bit about you, but how would you describe yourself to a stranger? Um, I used to describe myself as the nicest mean girl you'll ever meet because people just automatically assume that I'm mean, but um, it's kind of my defense mechanism. Like, I just got to uh, observe people and get a feel for you first. But um, to a stranger, I'm probably like a person who kind of tries to make your dreams come true. Like anybody I work with, I try to make their vision come to life, so... That's awesome. <laughs> I love that. And for you to, I'm happy you changed how you described yourself as the nicest mean girl, because you sent me both books. And I think we met through Carla, yep. the podcast coach. Yeah. Are you part of like the A EP, society, yep. the society and things of that nature? Yep. Okay. So when I received the inbox about the book, I was just like, oh my God, it's like my first real merchandise <laughs> of like crew love. And I was just like, and she's actually the author. So it was all my broken crayons still color. And you could just tell, I love this type of stuff. And I have to say my <laughs> favorite affirmation out of the whole book was, is compete on the highest level only against yourself. And it says, I will always work on me. Being selfish is not the same as putting you first. You will never be able to overachieve when you're not good. 
put the same efforts into yourself that you put into others. Simply put, love you more. <laughs> and it's just so funny. Like that was the title of your next book. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I relate to this so much, because I'm always an advocate of when people call me selfish, it's like, am I selfish because I'm not doing what you want me to do? And I'm putting me first. So can you remember where you were at when you wrote this affirmation? Um, I was trying to be selfish because I'm one of those people. I, I'll, I'll give and give and give until that my cup is completely empty and I feel like I wasn't able to I I had sat with that book for so long I'm like you're never gonna get it done if you don't be selfish and work on the stuff that you need to work on for you so that's where I was at when I was writing that so yeah it makes perfect <laughs> sense I mean that's how I was that's the podcast for me I was just like I'd be doing everything for everybody else when it comes to real estate, being a mom and all those things. And I was just like, I'm going to just cut the time out and do the things that I like. And I'm going to be selfish for me for once. <laughs> so that's really, really dope. Um, do you remember the first time or the moment that you were motivated to become an author? I never um, thought I was going to be an author. I had, um, so I still, on top of everything else, I still work a corporate job too for I don't know how long I, I when I started that job I said six years in now I'm like this is gonna be my last corporate job I'm not doing no more corporate jobs and at a time we were able to like watch tv and all that stuff at work and then they changed it and it was like right on time to like listening to podcasts and um I would listen to Eric Thomas all the time and listen to him like you need to get up at 3 30 I'm like I already get up at five it's a little right <laughs> But I would, um, I would just simply be like hearing stuff or listening to podcasts and something would spark me and I would just write it down. And um, my dad ended up passing and I ended up having like notebooks, like just full of stuff. And I was trying to figure out how to deal with everything that happened yeah. um, with him passing. So it just kind of turned into a book. And I was just like, oh, wow, you didn't sit here and wrote like, all of this stuff to bring yourself out of that so wow it kind of just turned into a book that's so funny how things happen like that <laughs> like yeah. and I want to stop saying funny it's like so purposeful when things happen to push us into those but I'm happy you yeah. use <laughs> that energy of grief to catapult you into writing this so amazing and I know you talk about him in the book yeah so we're gonna <laughs> get into that as well um for some reason and I'm sorry to pause this because it's going so good but I just feel like the track from you is not recording on my end are you recording on audacity too as um, we talk no I'm not recording anything oh shoot. did you want me to record I think I just because I'm noticing it's not picking up that was so good. We were doing so good. <laughs> Did you need to stop it and listen to it or? Yeah, let me see. One second. Um, let's see. I'm trying to. No, it's not picking up your sound. Oh, no. All right. So I'm so sorry. We were doing so good. <laughs> All right. You know what? Mm. All right. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hold on. And I swear I set this up right, girl. I'm looking. I'm like, when you talk, the it's thing, not thing is not moving. <laughs> uh -uh. And I'm happy I caught it. Uh. Mm. used to love like I used to um I don't know what's wrong with my screen but sorry okay. um, I used to love to color and I realized that like I had read something like 
just because you could be broken, God can still use you. And I'm mm. like, oh, oh, well, and then I seen it. And then right after that, I had seen somebody with a tattoo of a broken crayon. Like it was a broken crayon and it was like at the bottom of it, it was like, it's still colored. I was like, okay, that's it. That, that's going to be it. Wow. That, that, was me. that is amazing. Like, yeah. I love that. Cause when I saw the crayons, I was just like, Oh my God, that's right. Like, even though I might be going through all the mess, yep. <laughs> every life, the grieving of it all, like I can still make art. It yep. can still be beautiful and expressing ourselves is art. And those affirmations and words are a form of art. So that's really, <laughs> really dope. I absolutely love how you came up with that. So we're going to focus on the love you more grieving isn't easing and healing hurts because a little backstory the day I don't check my mail I think you mailed it for a while and I just never checked the mail and this particular day I checked the mail and it was literally the day after I had a miscarriage oh wow yeah so when I opened the box Try not to cry. When I opened the box and I saw that, I was just like, oh my God. It wasn't meant for me to check the mail no other day. Cause nope. it probably wouldn't have hit or resonated the same. Cause it was my first time that a doctor explained to me that a miscarriage can be grieving. Yeah. I've had two in the past. And this was the first time. And this is Side note, this is why I say Black women deserve Black doctors in these type of situations because she could relate to me being so strong and da-da-da-da-da. And you probably kept it moving all those other times. Exactly. This time it just hit different. It hit different and she recognized that. And so, and she's another Black woman. So she, she understood the burden that us as Black women carry. So when I got the book, I was just like, I just started bawling. And then you sit the oh. teacup with the healing. And I was just like, <laughs> oh my God. Like God knows exactly when you should do something. Like he told you to send it. And then he told me exactly when to open it. And so it was just like, I was like, I don't even think she knew what she did. And then the note. I, I didn't because what happened is um, that book. Oh my God. So. I lost a lot of people like in the book it's only six people but in the five years since my dad passed it was maybe like seven or eight people and then last year um I lost one of my really really somebody that was really special to me on my dad's birthday and in two I wrote that book in two weeks like God would not poured the whole book into me and I couldn't sleep I couldn't eat I couldn't do anything I just had to write that book and I had to get it all out and after I wrote it it was like the first book I found an editor they edited it it was great she sent it back I met all the deadlines this book it just kept getting pushed back like the person that I had edited the book she she was like, yeah, okay, it's fine, whatever, you know, I'll do it, whatever, and then she had to call me, and she's like, Maxie, I'm not trying to delay your book coming out, but I didn't think that it was going to affect me like that, and I'm like, well, you just said, because she kept telling me, well, I'm just free, she's like, I was like, well, did you read it, like, what do you think, yeah. like, because these are my babies, like, I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> like, I get nervous when I send my book out, yeah, and I actually only sent it to you, so I'm like, I love her podcast, it's always talking about books, so she loved books, I could just send her some books, I was like, well, maybe she'll read it, and she'll just give me a mm-hmm. review, and the editor called me back, and she was like, Maxie, I normally edit books, and I don't really read them. I just, you know, edit the book and keep it moving. She was like, but midway through your book, I'm like, she was like, I couldn't stop crying. I'm like, well, what's wrong? <laughs> like, yeah. My brother passed away 10 years ago, and wow. I never sat with that and got it out and figured it out, and it was, and she was like, I feel so bad. I said, it's nothing I could do about it. Like, I don't feel, I'm not mad at you. I said, yeah. it's meant to happen the way it was supposed to happen. Yeah. It's so it that was the point of the book. It's supposed to happen. And, and I don't, so, I'm sorry. I have oh, to say this. 
because I have a nervous laugh and I have a, like when something hits me it's wild. So we're talking about grieving and I'm laughing, not laughing at you or the situation, right. but it's just like, oh my God, like, cause I got that same feeling by reading the book. And so and I'm I, like, it's so relatable. And I told people like in writing the book, I was like, grief is not just about like losing people like people mm -hmm. always associated with somebody that passed away I'm like people grieve friendships they re grieve relationships mm -hmm. they just don't have a word to put to it like a lot of the things when I started doing research on like the five stages of grief I was like people feel these things all the time like mm -hmm. <laughs> all of this all the time so it's not just grief of losing someone is grief of like everything like anything you lost like anything that was close to you that you felt like ah, this is mattered set like yeah so it just wasn't for the loss of someone so yeah because talking about those five stages of grief which in the book it says denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance and that's where it hit me I was like I deal with these things regularly and especially in, in the moment of a miscarriage, it was like, I was denying what was happening. And then I was angry mm -hmm. about it, <laughs> but then I kind of got, you know, I'm bargaining with God, like why and da, 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 da. And then the depression kind of sets in and then you get to the point. It's like, okay, I got to accept it. I got to accept it for me to be able to move forward. I got to accept what is. Right. And so, yeah, <laughs> just the first, yeah. I'm just like, I was shit my business. <laughs> Not seeing my business. Uh, so how do you handle, how have you handled getting through grief or do you ever get through it and you just live with it? I think you can get through it. I think it's just a process because like, I tell people all the time, like, there's no, like, when I went through everything with my dad, there was no, nothing that anybody could have gave me to be like, oh, yeah, like, I got this, and it's okay, so I don't, like, I don't have to miss him anymore, it's mm -hmm. just not gonna happen, so I think you can learn how to deal with it so that you can continue on with your life, but it's something that you're just going to go through all the time and you don't know how it's going. Like recently, all I've been doing is crying and writing books. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> I don't yeah. know the process for me right now, but um, that, that's what it's been for me right now. Like, and it's hard for me because I used to be, I was like, I'm not a crier. I did not grow up. You, you do not. My mom do not. You, you get one day with her. Like you get one day to cry it out and that's it. You got to yeah. move on. You can't be sitting around doing that all day. So that was my process, but um, yeah. It don't work. It don't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. I, I think, I don't know how old your mom, my mom is a, another generation. I'll just say yeah, my she's age. In her I'm 60s. 30. Oh, okay, so they're in the same yeah. uh, generation. And I feel like to this day, she'll be like, I got God. I don't be going through all of that. I, da, 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 da. But I'd be like, that's what's yeah. wrong with you now. <laughs> yeah, you, know what you bring up like, you need to go talk to somebody. Talk to who? I got Talk to who? I don't need to talk to nobody. I'm like, okay. Like, y'all, we, like, we have this, like, just my cousins now that's my age like 35 to 40 we just all be like they need some counseling mm -hmm. they just some they therapy don't, they don't know what that they don't want to but y'all could have really dealt with a whole lot of stuff y'all been holding on to for 20 years if y'all just had to talk to somebody okay now, I, i'm not talking to no stranger that's probably <laughs> the best person you should talk to <laughs> i always right. tell people god and therapy is a perfect thing to get me through and I didn't realize that until just a few years ago and this is like I have this segment in the show where I talk about therapy all the time and I have it through better help which is who I partner and sponsor who sponsor my episodes and I tell people I don't just sponsor with them because of an affiliate like right. I actually use them and so I always tell people to go to betterhelp.com slash crew love 
and get the 10% off and just try the therapy. Like you don't even have to do it every month, but I feel like therapy is like an oil change where (laughs) every few months, if once you, cause I went for like mm, six months straight and then I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. And then I would have like a complete meltdown in a few months and I'm like, I need my therapist. (laughs) And then I would get back on the app and be like, we need to talk. And so I highly recommend therapy. It's the best thing I discovered because a lot of times we end up expressing our emotions and things to other people who really don't, they got their own stuff going on. You got to be careful sometimes because people could be jaded or they just agree with you. Yeah, you're right. Like, what? Like, well, what? <laughs> the therapist will have you challenging your mind, your yeah. history. They're not biased to the experiences that you have. So yeah, I highly recommend therapy. I don't try to get my mom <laughs> and I'm gonna go to therapy child. It ain't happening. <laughs> I just I, I just throw it out there all the time. Like y'all probably should talk to somebody. <laughs> yeah. And I even become more open to saying, yeah, I have therapy at three o'clock or I have therapy just so it's like, well, damn, what's going on with Sade? But it's just like, no, I'm actually a better person because I'm going to therapy because I'm I can respect the boundary yeah. of you yeah. and me. And it's so crazy that it's still like taboo because I have a friend that's getting married in September and she's like, yeah, you know, we're going to to our counseling sessions and people were just like, I don't need that. What's wrong with y'all? I'm like, you don't have to be doing bad to for y'all to be able to get better communication. She was like, friend, I'm just not listening to them. I say, no, don't do that. You working on y'all together. Like y'all going to become one. Y'all going to be great together. Like y'all don't have to be doing bad for somebody to tell y'all, Hey, you know, maybe y'all should pray more. Maybe y'all should do this. And she yeah. was like, like, don't listen to them people. Cause they probably need some therapy therapy too. <laughs> okay. Me and my husband in therapy, cause Lord knows we need it. But I feel like we, you shouldn't wait to the last minute to yeah. get it when it comes to couples in therapy. So kudos to them for going now and keeping, keeping it keeping it going going yeah and then they know how to be preventative before the problems even happen um and they don't have to grieve a divorce (laughs) okay all right right, so uh I want to ask you this because since you've experienced loss and everything a lot of times people don't know what to say or what to do like what do you think people people should say or people should do or how how do you feel like you've done it or what would you like recommend I I just tell people it's okay if you're not okay if you're not okay just say you're not okay and that's fine because all of the because the thing is people get tired of hearing that same old oh, they're in a better place. And, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's like, what are you sorry for? You didn't even do (laughs) it. Right. Yeah. And it was funny because, um, it's not really funny, but it was a, a older church lady and I was really close to her daughter and her daughter passed away. And the older lady at the church came up to her and was like, you know, she's not suffering anymore. She's in a better place. And she just went off like, how do you know that? You don't know that. You didn't know mm-hmm. that she didn't want to be here. You didn't know that. I'm like, uh, I'm like, yeah, she's tired. Of yeah. Saying the same. Thing. Thing. Same I'm thing. like, you know, if you're not okay, it's okay for you. Not, you don't have to be okay. Yeah. Nobody's going to be okay. Some people... Yeah. Some people are irreplaceable. You're just not going to be, I'm just not going to be okay. I'm just and not. That's, and that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just have yeah. to work through that, but I, I'm i just not going to be okay. Yeah. I heard on another podcast, I was talking about grieving and she was saying, I can't remember. Well, it was probably the breakfast club, child. Well, it's not <laughs> breakfast club. And she was saying like, people will be there in the beginning, but it's the month or two after where the support is really needed because when you're when it's new and fresh it's like you don't really want to be bothered in a sense right because you don't know you're trying to process emotions but it's those months later where people not checking in people not texting and people not calling I was just like oh my god that makes so much sense and 
do you feel the same way like do you I, I actually like um so last year I had w- one of my cousins that's actually in the book he passed away and then and it was sudden so it was a surprise to our family and then my uncle who had been in hospice for like two years during the whole pandemic yeah. they had gave him like six months we were all like prepared for that he passed like 30 days after him so it oh, was wow. back to back and it was like you could see that people was like oh my god like we just seen you we just came to a funeral for y'all but in the weeks that passed nobody's heard from you yeah. like what are you talking about, about yeah and i just showed up to the funeral like we they were still trying to process that like i was telling my auntie like it's okay if you're not okay because you lost your son then you lost your brother and it's like yeah. She was like, I ain't heard from none of these people. I'm like, you probably ain't. The people mm-hmm. who are going to be there are the people who are going to be there. And mm-hmm. it, it's hard because a lot of people will reevaluate the people in their life after something like that happens because it's like, you go back to your regular scheduled program, mm-hmm. but my regular scheduled program, like with my uncle, it was taking him food every day to the funeral, up to the nursing home every day that he was at because he would refuse to eat the nursing home food. Right. So that's my regular scheduled program. I can't go back to that. Right. It's hard to go back to just the way it was. My mm-hmm. life is different now. Yeah. So it's just like, check on me, not <laughs> just when it's bad. Like, check on me after and even before, like while I'm processing and going through this. Because being a caregiver for people that are in those situations is tough too. So somebody yeah. got to be taking care of the caregiver. Um, but yeah, the Let's- yeah, then check on my strong friends be so taboo, but it's like, if you're not the strong friend, you need somebody to check on you. <laughs> okay, I don't learn, like, I'm pouring in everybody else's cup, but I need somebody to pour in my cup, and that's one of the reasons why, like, the crew is so important and how I want to grow it, because I feel like it's a whole bunch of strong people coming together and checking in on each other. <laughs> right, um, pouring into each other's cup. Pour- yeah, because we always pouring into everybody <laughs> else's cup, okay? So, I'm looking at time. Okay, we're doing, we're doing good. We're doing good. (laughs) I want to talk about one of the, there's, all the stories are great. There are six stories in there, but I really, I was going to dive into Nika, your dad and Stormy. Okay. And I feel like that's like covers friend, family, and I feel like love of life, (laughs) right? In a sense, something like that. (laughs) And so when I, read Nika's story she I feel like she reminded so much of me like how she was is you had it here she said if you had the privilege of meeting I'm saying her name right is it Nika Mm -hmm. yes Nika and didn't like her you were just being a hater yeah (laughs) I mean like I I understand (laughs) and I feel like if you never meet somebody you just look at them and perception and everything it's like that person always nice there's nothing you can say bad about that person she was that person like I never I've seen her go through stuff and still not be mean to people and I'm just like yeah God gave you a different type of heart because a different type of patience I cannot it was she was so nice it was that she has a um she has a younger sister that I'm still close to to this day and her sister would even though Nika would let it go and she wouldn't argue with the people, her sister would back around and say, you know what? <laughs> I'll fight you. She don't fight, but I fight. <laughs> I'm like, you can't beat up people that she not mad at. I just don't like the way they did that. <laughs> yeah. She was just that nice. nice. Like, yeah, she was just one of those people. Like, she was just, she'd do anything for anybody. Like, anybody. People she just met in five minutes, she would do stuff for. I was just like, girl, <laughs> like, can't yeah, be doing God, that. God gave you a different like he, he totally gave you a different type of heart to That's be that kind to every everybody, single person no matter what no matter what no, even maybe with her we, own things that she was going through like you would never even know the people used to see like she don't never go through nothing I'm like what are you talking about? about you don't know her <laughs> right you, you don't know her you haven't she just to her. she's just not one of them people to hold on to it like her faith was really strong and she was just happy I love that. When I was reading that, I feel like the way you um, described her, I was like, I could, I, I felt the energy. And then you had it here. You said, I really couldn't understand it. 
I hated customer service sitting on the phone all day was for the birds. And it made me think like time, times we may be in situations that makes no sense. But I felt like your purpose of being in that situation was because of her, to learn from her. It had to be because we were in a shared <laughs> cubicle and I would sit there all day like, why am I here? Like, why am I here? It, it, it was horrible to me. I'm like, I'm like, this manager don't like me. She comes stand in between <laughs> us. She don't even talk to me. I'm like, what am I doing here? <laughs> And I feel like that was think of purpose. And I feel like you knew that when you wrote, sometimes all you need is someone to change the way you view life. It had to be because that didn't work for me. (laughs) That didn't work for me. Um, I also like how you wrote on her story. It says, we were making all types of plans, but sometimes your plans are not in God's plans. And a lot of time things put off until tomorrow never happen because tomorrow may never come. Yeah. Do you run that back? Does that keep you all all the time, <laughs> all the time? Because yeah. when we came up with doing event planning, it wasn't even a it wasn't a thing. It wasn't one of those things that people even talked about doing. And then when we tried to circle it back, it was at the time where that's all you see now. All you see yeah. is outrageous baby showers and birthday parties for kids yeah. that cost like five six hundred dollars like I have a five-year-old nephew and I had to tell my niece like you tripping if you think that the type of party he finna get is one of them that you've seen on Instagram that's like three thousand (laughs) dollars and he don't care about none of these people that's coming no I'm not gonna be able to do it I'm just not I like I don't understand five thousand dollars for a kid's party that's too much I can't (laughs) we we could get him uh (laughs) investments something like not for that (laughs) you spent over a thousand dollars on balloons no (laughs) what happened to just pizza ice cream and cake (laughs) the simple parties you invite the people you invite a few people over okay y'all sing happy birthday y'all get some chips some hot dogs some music on and then it turns into the adult party right after they having full like Boy, it's like a wedding. I mean, like, what is this? No, I completely understand. Yeah, but no. I'm happy you met Nika and had that experience yeah. with her. And I absolutely loved her story. And another thing, I liked how you put their pictures in the book. And I felt like that was so honorable to yeah. honor them in that moment. I had so. to, I I had, I reached out to, well, outside of my grandmother and my dad, because I can do whatever I want to do with their pictures, but um, everybody else in the book, I reached out to the person that was closest to them and asked, could I put their picture yeah. in the book? Because I wanted to honor them in a special way. Like I wanted people to read about them and get to know them and then actually like, oh, okay, yeah. there's a picture. Like I want to meet Yeah, because I would like, I, I want, want to, to see what they, the yeah. At the end, so. It was very beautiful. I love that. So hopping into your dad, because we only have like a few minutes left and I want to <laughs> tap into, into his story. And before his, uh, his title is when you're getting ain't getting and you're gotten is gone. Is that something he... Yeah, that that's something he, he said. Yeah. <laughs> what is explain what he means when he say that? Well, actually, he would say that to my mom. They would have like a back and forth, uh-huh. and she would get mad, and he'd be like, "Well, don't be mad at me because your getting ain't getting, and your gotten is gone." I'm like, what? <laughs> I was I read it a your few times. <laughs> it's like your getting ain't getting no more, and your gotten is it's gone. gone. Right. <laughs> I absolutely love the title. And it says you went years without talking to him. What was it that brought you back around to talking to your dad? Um, going to church and getting my own healing and getting an understanding that sometimes your parents, well, actually just knowing that your parents are just human people. And if you don't know their experiences and their stories, you don't know why they act the way that they do or why they can't give you what you feel like you need Mm -hmm. from them sometimes they just they're just not capable of giving you something that they never had have yeah I relate to that because I don't had to cut both of my parents off for periods of time out of boundaries too I feel like they forget 
when we're adults and yeah. they don't know how to cut that parent boundary off. Yeah, it's like, and, wait a minute, hold on. I'm, I'm over 30. Wait a minute. I pay all my bills. I'm not asking you for nothing. I ask for that. <laughs> so res- respect, respect, yeah. respect. Because I feel like there's a certain time where that child parent authority thing has to separate and you have to become my friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm happy you and your dad reconciled and you yeah. were able to have that experience with him before. And it really made me evaluate like, okay. And my therapist been telling me, but <laughs> when reading it and you're dealing with actual death, knowing like he can't come back to re- resurrect yeah. that relationship. I was just like, okay, I, I'm going to let my dad and his wife be them and my mama be them. And that it is what it is. Yeah. I can only- I know, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, cause I know lots of people who like that. <laughs> that was it for me I'm not I'm not going back mm-hmm. and I and I just clearly tell them like as long as you can be okay because for me it wasn't like oh I need him to you know fix stuff and do this and all that. yeah he live close to me it was that if something was to happen I'm, I'm not I wasn't gonna be okay yeah so I needed to fix it so I could be okay that part yeah, I think it was just like, I accept what, who you are as a person and as a parent, and I have no direct connection to your healing. The only thing I can do is set the boundary with you and hope you respect it. Yeah. And if you don't, then that just the evaluation of how I need you and want you in my life, but I don't want you completely out of my life. Right. So love the story with um you and your dad. You guys have to get this book. And I, and I know people are like, oh, she said that about every book. <laughs> but I do try to get books like this that puts us in perspective. And we'll be, and I don't want to rush it, but we, I don't, the time, you know, people got short times on podcasts. <laughs> uh, talk about Stormy really quick. And there was a part of here where you said all that blocking my mama tried to do didn't work because we ended up dating anyway. That's yeah. right. That's always. <laughs> yeah. Um so, she was she big on just not it, it, she don't care if you young don't date don't date if you do date don't date one person date a lot of people I said it's only because you got married to my dad at 16 like if you didn't do that you wouldn't feel like that she was like yeah. I just know I just know how young love is it doesn't work <laughs> I'm like that's your 16 year old self talking <laughs> okay <laughs> So, and the affirmation that you had was, I will not miss an opportunity to tell the people in my life that I love them. I will not take the people I love for granted and I will love unconditionally. And I think that I will not take the people I love for granted because you and Stormy didn't have a, um, you guys had a committed relationship and then it was like this back and forth of, I don't know type of thing. Yeah. Have have you learned from that? So like the next time love does come around, it's like I'm taking full advantage. That's what I said after that. Like it, the next time it won't be like, no, I'm gonna wait till I fix this or I'm gonna wait till maybe I just need to work on that. It's like, no, if that's what I want, then that's what I'm gonna do. And I'll work on it together and not apart. Because you take, and the reason why he got that affirmation is because it was like, I knew he would always be there like in my mind like I could call him or something bad happened he'll call me or I just want to be around him we could be together tomorrow it was always like you gonna there's time be here like for somebody to be 40 something years old they don't always I'm like 40 yeah you gonna always be here like no they're not like Most of the people that I lost, they they're young compared to what people would think. Like they're not 70 or 75 or nobody's grandmother. Like, no, they're young. And it's like, wait a minute. These people may not be here. Yeah, they may not be here. So you can't just sit around thinking that. Oh, I can just take people on the sideline and wait and do whatever and feel like they're going to always be here. They may not always be here. So right. if you don't appreciate them and the know moment that those people 
that you care about them and know, let them know that you love them all the time, you may not get that opportunity. Because I know like with my dad, when he got sick, me and my sister were doing a, a back and forth. Mm-hmm. Like she was going one weekend and then I was going to go the next weekend. I never got my weekend. Like oh, wow. I never got my, the last time I seen him, it was a horrible experience. Everybody was mad and everybody was arguing and, and all of that. And it was like, okay, yeah. well you take the first weekend and my sister got her weekend. I never got mine. So it was like, you don't always get the opportunity yeah. to fix stuff or tell right. people how you really feel about them. So you can't keep just holding on to that. Like, I know now people be like, well, I ain't posting them and I ain't saying this. So I'm like, no, the next time I'm posting everybody, I'm saying everything. Oh I don't gosh. care. <laughs> I, I do not want to miss out on the rest of this conversation. I'm going to put this car information in <laughs> because we cannot end the episode like this. Hold on one second. Let me put my card in. I know I should have did this before. I was like, no, we should be fine, girl. Uh-uh. <laughs> This is too good. I don't want to just rush it. Let me put this in real quick. Um, 11, 26. All right, continue. Yes, that's the payment. All right, we're in there. <laughs> I did upgrade. It should refresh. Okay, I did. Um, well, it's still recording, I think. Okay, yeah, <laughs> all right, progress. And I'll just link the audio up together, child. <laughs> Back to that editing, <laughs> okay, trying to put me to work. <laughs> all right, so we left off talking about Stormy, and you realizing, like, no matter what, whoever. I'm with we yeah. we put in love out there and it is what it is and you saying that like right now I'm like going through the most with marriage and it really makes you be like what's what's important yeah and do you uh, it's so hard to tap into that because you be trying to respect the other person, <laughs> other, the other party. So I'm going to just say realizing like loves of life and being appreciative of that and making sure when you are with someone, that connection is taken seriously. Yeah. And if you're with someone, you're with someone in it. And that it should be blissful. Like, not saying that things are not going to happen. Right. Life is always going to happen. Right. But you should be sharing and cherishing those partnerships and being with people to experience life like that. Yeah. So if you're in a relationship where you feel like you need to move forward to experience, to find that type of experience, because it's out there and meet somebody like Stormy who seemed very supportive and loving and it seemed oh like God. it could be your it seemed like he allowed your 100% authentic you is that yeah is that right yeah because most of our relationship issues were because I couldn't let go of doing stuff for other people mm-hmm. like I was like nope I gotta do this I gotta do that like I had that that mindset, like, nope, they were here first. So because these people, my family, they need me to do all of this stuff. I got to do that first. Yeah. So the relationship stuff wasn't at the top of my list of the things I want to do. He'd be like, so what happens when all of those people decide to go live their life? Then what you going to do? Mm. Like, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> er, you got, you got <laughs> I don't know. And then it happened, like, everybody else was happy. Everybody else was living their life the way they yeah. wanted to live their life and it's like well dang I put all y'all in front of the stuff that I wanted to do like yeah. it goes back to that being selfish, selfish. for the it's right like, reasons you gave gave and gave to everybody else so they could be happy and now it's like you get lost in the sauce like you don't know what makes you happy and the thing that makes you happy you not doing it yeah because you still worried about everybody else it's like sometimes you really have to put yourself first 
and say, you know what, I'm just going to do the things that make me happy. And if everybody else around me is upset, then that's too bad. Oh my God. You are <laughs> like speaking to my soul. You're speaking to my soul. Cause there's decisions that I currently have to make. That's not going to make people happy and it's going to make me happy. And it is what it is. It's like confirmation in a sense of hearing that. It's crazy because Whew. I was, um, so like I said, I never set out to write that second book. Like it was because of him passing on my dad's birthday that it was, it put me in a place where it was, I was like done for, like, I didn't know what else to do, but yeah. cry and pray. So that's what came out. And then it's funny because this week I got so like I was telling one of my cousins like I feel like I'm healed like I, I, nothing is bothering me and I got so triggered this week by a whole bunch of stuff and it's like God what are you doing like I don't want to write another book but <laughs> it's like well you don't have no choice boy when it's God's will it's like, God's I will want to. but then it was like Maxie, you got to get all the rest of it out. So the mm -hmm. third book that'll be coming out in January is called I Am Not Responsible for Your Tears. It's, it's, the, it's the guide to being authentically happy. So it's like, I'm not responsible. Like, you're not responsible for everybody else's tears. Like, this is your life, your story, and the stuff that you went through has to be put out here so that you could just be happy. <laughs> I feel like you write for me. <laughs> I was just having this conversation with someone about happiness in life. And I have someone, another person in my life that feels like, what is happiness? Like we just do this junk. And I'm like, no, 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 no. no. We're supposed to be happy. We, we don't supposed to, I shouldn't be this sad about certain things. And I feel like I've put in so much work in other aspects. And it's like, there's one thing that I'm like, well, it's one of those things that I had to tell. Um, I told one of my friends, I said, I remember telling myself that doing this for other people made me happy doing that for them. Mm -hmm. I, I I'm happy because I love seeing them happy. Right. I said, but when you go around through life and all you do is give, give, give to other people to make them happy, you're not happy. You're not yeah. happy. You're not, you don't even, I said, it got to a point where I didn't even know what made me happy. Me happy. Yeah. Like taking care of other people is not going to make you happy. Like mm -hmm. you just doing what they need you to do you compromising everything just so these people are happy yeah. is never gonna make you're not ever gonna be happy mm. there's never going to be a point you're just gonna wake up like I am so happy because I have to run this person around I gotta pay for this for this person and do this this and this and this and I said and you, you realize like do you even know what you like yeah do you know what you like do you know what you, like if you had to get up and do one thing that you really really enjoy doing what is it and they're going to be and driving people be like, around right? <laughs> and paying for other people's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. And doing all of this stuff. And like people get so caught up, like there's no such thing as people just generally being happy. And I'm like, I've seen people that yeah, have yeah. less than what I have that work way harder than me. And they were just simply happy. happy. Like they didn't have all of this other outside mess. Like you can be happy. And it's like, it, it makes me think about Stormy all the time because he was one of those people like people didn't bother him like he would just be happy like he was like I'm not dealing with that I'm like how can you just do that like, <laughs> yes I love that like, energy. because I'm not gonna let them stress me and I be unhappy he was like I don't know why you keep doing that and I'm just like oh my god I hate you because <laughs> I want to it's like I, I hate wanna you because I want to be like that <laughs> I want to be like that I want to be one of the people like nope I'm not doing that yeah, that's, that's going to that's going to interrupt my peace. That's going to interrupt my happiness. And it's hard to get to that place. Yes, those are boundaries. And after <laughs> reading that, after yeah. reading our last book about boundaries, I'm like, I was yeah, just like, oh, I, I ain't I people pleasing all, no more. I need all life. of those. Like, 
Like you need to wake up and set every last one of them out of that book. I'm like, okay. So yeah, this I highlighted that whole. Tough. I highlighted that whole book. <laughs> this is gonna I, be tough. This is gonna be tough. But practicing one boundary a day, I think, and for me, it was starting with self setting the boundaries for myself and not looking at it as setting the boundaries for others. I was like, these are boundaries for me to be in more peace and live in my most happiest life. So I can't wait for this book because we're going to come back on here. We're going to talk about it. Uh, uh, so there's two segments that I love to do. And um, we're at least going to get the, the ones from the tip um, the regular episodes. It's what would the crew do? And we're going to give some advice. And then, of course, we can't leave the show without a quarter of the week. So the first one is going to be, what would the crew do? And I thought of this for myself because this is for me. We never, oh, wait, we did it. And the big, oh, junk. I realized on the outline, <laughs> I'll edit it. It was when we never know what to say when someone loses someone, what would you say or do to someone grieving? You already answered that. So I'm going to have that as what would the crew do? And the, so yeah. Oh my gosh, we did it. We got to another episode. I thought I deleted this out. See, Maxie, I ain't perfect, child. Hey, but you know, no, we, we nobody do. is perfect. We, <laughs> we keep it working. pushing. Okay. Right. I keep it pushing. You two might see this little video like this, but this podcast is going to be clipped and edited and ready to go. Okay. They have to catch all the bloopers on YouTube. Catch all the bloopers on YouTube. I'll see you the links. The links will be at the bottom of the podcast. Oh, is your book on Audible? No. Okay. So tell us where we can find you find your books and everything like that so both of the books are available on amazon or if you want signed copies then you would have to dm me um it's maxi norman or elnor maxwell on all social media platforms so that's m-a-x-i-e-n-o-r-m-a-n that's facebook instagram twitter or they're under, or you could look them up under my business name, which is Elnora Maxwell, which is E L N O R A M A X W E L L. So that's me everywhere. Do you have anything coming up locally? I know you do a lot. I see you do like <laughs> events and stuff. Um, I don't have anything right now for the summer. I don't. I don't know what's going to happen this summer. Um, I do have another uh, podcast to be on next month I think it is but awesome. I'm just kind of you know I'm kind of chilling this summer I guess okay well we'll be following <laughs> and waiting and definitely yeah. can't wait for the next book to come out so crew you know we cannot finish the episode without a quote of the week and it comes from our guest author today Maxi E. Norman and the quote is sometimes you don't know what you don't know it's life and that's okay. There is no timeline to deal with grief. Thank you so much y'all for tuning in to the Crew Book Club podcast. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. Hey. Thank you for okay. having me, Shawnee. You're so welcome. <laughs> I'm going to stop the recording. We can chat off. <laughs>